Well, hello, you. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. How are you doing tonight? I'm great. And so, look, Peter, last year, remember I said Peter was giving Bond, James Bond? And I also said he's giving Carpenter, Peter Carpenter. Isn't he still giving it? He's still giving it? Doesn't he look good? <laughs> I always like to start these by making Peter blush. So that was... That was it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna embarrass you anymore. Well, I, I appreciate that. And doesn't Paula look lovely this <laughs> evening? Doesn't she? <laughs> Last year we had quite a conversation about her shoes because um, they were really high and they were really spiky and apparently Hurdy. really painful. <laughs> Right. They were very hurdy. <laughs> I just made that word up. They were very hurdy. This is coming from an English teacher, right? <laughs> yes. Very hurdy. Very hurdy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, in all seriousness, we are so glad that you are here with us this evening. And how cool is it that we got to roll out the literal red carpet for our star-studded cast of characters from Hartford County Public Schools? I love our theme this year. You are the star. And what better way to show up than if we are not among the stars this evening, right? Yeah. Can we give it up for our stars this evening? Yeah. A huge thanks to Mountain Christian Church, not only for the use of their absolutely stunning and gorgeous space, but for making sure that we had the right stars out and about in the lobby. Can we please give it up for our friends at Mountain Christian Church? You know, I think this is the perfect theme um, because I love movies, and personally, I know that I love shows. I don't watch a lot of television, but I have been known to binge a Netflix series or two. Um, the visual arts can really be and create those binge-worthy moments that make us laugh or help us to escape some of those realities that we may be facing. And for me, I love shows that make me think. I know some of my favorite movies, though, are from the superhero genre, and they're not only fun and thrilling, but they also give us pause to see life in a whole other way. Do you have a favorite show or movie that you love, Paula? You know I do. <laughs> so I've been watching, we, we need to stop the show because we need to talk. We need to talk about The Resident. Anybody watch The Resident? It's been canceled, but I love, love, love that show. And, and you know, I don't know why they canceled. I'm gonna write a letter. But here, here's what I really love about The Resident. Morris Chestnut. I, I, it's, it, my spouse is safe, though, because he's really mean on the show. So, you know, I look at him, but then I hear him. I look at him, and then I hear him. I look, and then it just doesn't match, but he fine. <laughs> but as, no verb. As, but Peter, as you know, I have lots of movies and shows that I watch. That's just one of them. But a lot of times we enjoy a movie or show and we tend to place the credit for the success on those people we see on the screen. Morris Chestnut, right? But the reality is it takes a whole group of people to make a movie or show great or to make it binge worthy. There's so much that goes on behind the screen, the, the scenes, and we don't really get to see those things, right? Mm -mm. But every single person who's involved is important and creates a successful experience. And I guess that's why it takes like five to 10 minutes for the credits to roll at the end, right? <laughs> because there are so many people that go into making yeah. those shows so great. And do you, does anybody read the credits like I do? Okay, I know that's boring, but I do read the credits, right? <laughs> so speaking of credits, when we started thinking about this event, our school system is a lot like a movie or a show. There's so many people who make student learning happen. And while our teachers are the ones who are at the forefront, the ones we see most often in front of our students, there's a whole cast of characters who are equally as passionate, talented, and credentialed who we thought we needed to honor tonight. We want you to know that we see every single one of them as superstars. Absolutely. So in the spirit of an awards show, tonight we have elevated our Celebration of Excellence in Education Awards to include so many of those folks who may be seen as supporting cast, but are quite credit worthy. And you know what? I want to highlight just, this is impromptu, so <laughs> not on the script at all, but this really cool feature that we have this evening. We have a VIP corner Ooh. over here. And right here are our former Teachers of the Year for Hartford County Public Schools. They have their special seating 
you have some like candy and all kinds of stuff over there too, don't you? <laughs> like someone, look at Mr. Brogley. Somebody took really good care of you and we're really glad that we could provide, Mountain could provide this little space. It's, by the way, this is their idea. They have this on Sunday morning. We just totally stole it like a good teacher does. So can we welcome our former teachers of the year too as well? So for our fi top five finalists, one of them may be sitting over here next time with them. Yeah. yeah. Who will it be? I can't wait to find out. Me either. And I'm going to be over there later for some candy. Just save me a couple pieces. I see you save me a seat. So scooch over. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and this year, we're adding award categories so that we can expand on the fun. So in November and December of this last year, a survey was distributed to the system and the community, inviting them to nominate those who exhibit excellence in the following areas. Education Support Professional of the Year, Custodian of the Year, Facilities Worker of the Year. Woo! Woo. <laughs> That's the spirit. That's right. Feel free to go off. Technology. <laughs> not too far off. Not, not too much, though. <laughs> Technology <laughs> Professional of the Year. Food and Nutrition Worker of the Year. Yeah. Woo! All right. Assistant Principal of the Year. <laughs> and Principal of the Year. And look, we can't help but mention, he's probably not gonna like this, but we can't help but mention that Hartford County Public Schools is proud to have Maryland State Superintendent of the Year for 23-24, Dr. Sean Balson. <laughs> we, won't, we won't mention it again, I promise. <laughs> A panel of judges and employees reviewed the applications and narrowed the nomination field down to three candidates for each of these categories, and tonight, we will see who will be crowned what we've affectionately referred to as an ODI, which stands for of the year. And tonight is an extra special night because for the 30th year in a row, we will crown our HCPS Teacher of the Year as well. Yeah? Yes. It's really exciting. We love this night. We love the energy that it brings. And we absolutely love to celebrate and elevate the profession we so love to be a part of. Last year, we expanded the Teacher of the Year Fund to ensure that every Hartford County Public School could have a representative and elevate one teacher who they would say, this is our school's Teacher of the Year. This year, we are continuing in that tradition. We not only had a top five, but we also had a top 55. We will be honoring those top 55 candidates tonight, one from each school. Each of the 55 nominees could elect whether or not they wanted to move on to mm -hmm. compete for the top five Teacher of the Year uh, nominees. And from our 55, we had 34 people who stepped forward and said, I wanna give that a shot. And so, um, yes, we can give that a round of applause to be considered for Teacher of the Year. And out of that 34, we have narrowed the field down to five. That's right. So after that rigorous vetting of those elected to go forward, five emerged as our top five Teachers of the Year this year. And I know from my own experience that they must be super excited, nervous, and also maybe just a little bit overwhelmed. Is that right? Yeah, I, I, I know. I feel that way for all the nominees tonight. <laughs> um, each year, I always sit on the edge of my seat wondering, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Yeah. And this year, we get to ask that question not just for our Teacher of the Year, yeah. but the other categories as well. So let's take a few moments and ask our nominees for all of our categories that we've nominated this year to please stand, and let's give them a round of applause. So can we please stand nominees this evening? I'm just gonna warn you that by the end of the night, your hands are gonna be a little tired from clapping. Mm -hmm. So we wanna make sure that we exercise them as well as we can and get them as red as we can from clapping. Just make it thunderous and uproarious and all those English words that I probably am not remembering right now. Well so. done, well done. <laughs> While we are in a celebratory mode, this is a celebration of excellence in education after all. Um, we, would like to, we would be remiss if we didn't acknowledge those who have contributed to making this happen. 
It's really important to note that 100%, 100%, every penny, everything of this event is sponsored by outside partners, vendors, and those who also love and invest in public education. And we would not be able to do what we do this evening without those special sponsors. So let's give it up for those sponsors as well. And toward the end of our program, we will acknowledge those sponsors um, and really gen who generously support us uh, as a system. Yes. So let's stay on the celebration train just for a minute. We want to invite each of you to think about your own life and those people who have invested in you. Imagine it might have been a parent, a family member, a teacher. Picture them in your mind. Get a picture of what they were wearing, how they acted with you, and why you are thankful for them. In the coaching world, we try to send loving kindnesses to people who we love. It's simply a mental thank you that you might offer to them for their investment, for their time, and for their care. So, I want you to send a mental loving kindness to them right now. I'll pause for a moment while you do that. You know, tons of research confirms the notion that gratitude is the ultimate practice in whole being wellness. Practices such as waking up, noting three things for which you're grateful for, can set the mood and tone and course of your day. Stopping amid a stressful day that we've been having to ponder the good refocuses our lens and helps us recommit to the reasons why we do what we do. Even ending the day by writing down three things that happened that were positive can positively impact sleep, mood, and enhance and enrich interpersonal relationships. Gratitude has been noted to have a massive butterfly effect. When we practice it, it directly impacts others with whom we interact, which then impacts others and then others, and it goes on and on and on and on. In essence, that, that is the heartbeat of education. And that is the why behind why so many of our employees have selected to be here in Hartford County Public Schools and invest in the life of children. Tonight is designed to hit the pause button to practice those gratitude moments intentionally and very publicly for all who contribute to the learning of our students. And in thinking about celebrating our staff, it occurred to us that many of us wouldn't be where we are without someone from our lives, as Paula mentioned, who has gone before us, who has invested in us. That investment lives on through us because we were invested in, we then return the favor to invest in someone else. So tonight, we will honor one educator who has gone before us, who has invested in so many students. We will honor one educator who is retired and was an educational rock star and still holds the title of excellent educator. I personally know tonight's nominee. She was my teacher in high school. And I know the impact that she has had on me and even my younger brother when we were at Bel Air High School in the early 90s. So tonight, we will induct Ms. Terry Wainwright into the Harper County Public Schools Educator Hall of Fame. I'd like to invite Terry, along with Linda Chamberlain from the Harford Retired Educators Association, to please come forward and join us on the stage. A little bit of um, notes for this evening. If anyone is coming up on the stage, here's your direction. You're going to walk this way up the lighted steps, come around the table here, and you're gonna join us up on the stage. So would you please come and join us up on the stage for a moment. <laughs> Terry Wainwright is being honored with 27 years of Harford County Public Schools. She received both her Bachelor of Science and Master of Liberal Arts from Johns Hopkins University. After serving as a teaching assistant at Harford Community College and Dundalk Community College, she accepted a position with Harford County Public Schools in 1977 to teach English in grades 9 through 12 at Bel Air High School. During her time at Bel Air High School, Ms. Wainwright was also served as coordinator of gifted and talented instruction and as a consultant 
consultant for the Maryland State Department of Education's Gifted and Talented Education. I didn't know that about you. <laughs> in addition, she was a cheerleading and volleyball coach. She taught at Bel Air High School until 1980, where she briefly paused her career. She returned to Harford County and Bel Air High School in 1988 as an English teacher and remained in that role until 2003. And during that time, Ms. Wainwright was the literary magazine advisor, English department chair, and coordinator of the Professional Development School Partnership with Towson University. Go Tigers. <laughs> I graduated from there. She actively participated in countywide curriculum development and presentations in the area of creative writing. English 9 through 12, AP, advanced placement and differentiation for gifted and talented students and special needs students. Among other accomplishments, Ms. Wainwright was co-creator of the Master Tutor Program for Cooperative Learning. In 2003, Ms. Wainwright was promoted to secondary mentor teacher at Bel Air High School, Falston, and Joppatown High Schools. She presented professional development countywide for other mentors, new teachers, and school staff and delivered mentor training sessions at the county, state, and national conferences. Ms. Wainwright also served as an MSDE Governor's Academy instructor for English and co-authored several professional publications. Ms. Wainwright retired from Hartford County Public Schools in 2012 after get dedicating 27 years of her notable career to her students and colleagues in Hartford County and the Greater Education Foundation. And Terry, we are just so thrilled this evening to induct you into the Hartford County Public Schools Teacher Hall of Fame. Do you want to say a few words? Thank you. <laughs> uh, this is a great honor, and I'm very humbled um, by this award. I'm very appreciative of my friend Karen Gaiola for nominating me and um, for Bill Wiki. And um, uh, recommending me. And um, I found that working with both of them like all of my career, was just a wonderful pleasure. I, I'm a lucky person. I found the profession I was meant to have. And so it never felt like I was going to work. I just went to school and had fun. <laughs> um, but I really am fortunate to have worked with wonderful mentors myself. Dr. Ruth Birkins, if anybody here is old enough to remember <laughs> uh, was really a mentor for me. As were all of my colleagues, teaching is a collaborative profession. I mean, we help each other, and I would not be the person I am today without the help and knowledge and the encouragement of all of my colleagues. And as I said, as a mentor to um, most of new incoming new teachers. Uh, I was very, very fortunate to have wonderful supervisory people and administrative people who um, appreciated the fact that I knew and loved my subject area and I knew and loved kids. And when you love your kids, they love you back. Mm. <laughs> um, so it was, it was excellent to work with people who um, recognized that and also gave me the freedom to be very creative in the way that I could teach. And I really um, appreciate administrators especially who said, okay, I trust you, you can go on that field trip. <laughs> and uh, I, I, you know, I, I just had wonderful kids, uh, but then I thought all kids were wonderful. And mm -hmm. it was my job to find whatever it was in them that would make them love learning as much as I did. So it's been a wonderful time, and I'm very appreciative. Thank you.
Now, it's, it's really my honor and a privilege to present the certificate from the Harper County Retired School Personnel Association, who founded the idea of a Hall of Fame and started the inductions many years ago. But uh, I know Terry from a long time ago when we worked on Gifted and Talented together, and then we um, had a, um, well, it was a book club, but it was a social group, too. And that kind of got us through motherhood. <laughs> but uh, we are very honored the three, over 600 members of our association to present you with this certificate and acknowledge your induction. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Got it. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. Thanks, well done. <laughs> fun to have like a live band that's <laughs> ushering people out and bringing them up. Can we give it up for Mr. Josh Dill and the Have It A Grace High School Jazz Band? I know, I like, I start to... Me too, to me too, yeah. me too. They're great. So now that we've honored one of our retired educators, let's bring some of our current superstars from HCPS into the spotlight. Tonight, we're going to share with you some of those who support our schools in a variety of ways. For each category, the department head or lead will take the stage to share the winner from each category. Each of our winners focuses on high levels of inclusivity and customer service. In addition to that, our instructional nominees demonstrate exceptional two-way communication with families and high-quality family engagement. Hmm, all really important um, qualities in our educators today. So here's how this part will work. In the spirit of an awards show, we will name a category and the respective nominees from that category. From there, we will have a guest come up and reveal the winner for that category. I have these fancy cards and they are all hermetically sealed <laughs> so that nobody can get into it unless the person <laughs> except for the person who's coming up here and they're not hermetically sealed, but they do have this fancy little C. Yeah, you can see it on the camera. See, see it on the camera? Um, and just like any awards show, we like to keep the fun moving. So if it looks like your time is ending, all of you who um, have been nominated, Dr. Stanton may put the hand on the back to let you know, wrap it up. <laughs> It'll be a soft hand, I promise. <laughs> Who do we have first, Paula? So first up, I'd like to invite Ms. Christy Crawford-Smick to the stage to present our Educational Support Professional of the Year Award. Ms. Crawford Schmick is the president of the Hartford Education Association. Our educational support professionals are essential to the success of our students and staff and encompass our administrative support professionals, school safety liaison, paraprofessional, media technicians, and inclusion helpers. This year, we had three nominees for Educational Support Professional of the Year. And the nominees are Noel First, Administrative Support Specialist, Deerfield Elementary School. Look at behind us. You can keep going. I'm going to keep going. They're behind you. Okay. Dwayne Howe, <laughs> School Safety Liaison, Magnolia L Middle School. And I see them now. And I'm going to try to get this name right. And Beth Yampieri, Paraeducator, Forest Hill Elementary School. All right, Christy, would you like to do the honors? Yes, I would. And key HCPS Education Support Professional of the Year is Beth Campieri. You can give her her too. One second. I kind of want to say, come on down. <laughs> Maybe that's what we should say. Come on down. 
Come on over. Thank you. And the I microphone's on, so you could just. Super nervous. You're good. I'm a behind the scenes kind of person. So I'm not even going to look up when I read this. I just want to get out of here. <laughs> so, they were up there. First, I want to say thank you to HCPS for this honor. I would also like to thank my principal, Cheryl Shaw, and Vice Principal Angie Cook for the nomination. Also, Nikki Hackett and Jenna Carlino for their encouragement throughout the process. I'm so lucky to, I don't have my glasses, to, <laughs> to work at Forest Hill Elementary School. I've been blessed to work with some of the best teachers and paraeducators in the STRIVE program. I love my job, and that's because of the friendship and support I receive Great. from my coworkers and the victories I get to celebrate every day with my students. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Sing along with it if you know it. Da, 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 da. Oh, we cut that part, didn't we? I did. At your request. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that was the appropriate music for this next person who's coming up, but I'd like to invite Cornell Brown, Assistant Superintendent of Operations, to the stage at this moment. That's right. <laughs> Tonight, Mr. Brown will be announcing our first ever Custodian of the Year and Facilities Professional of the Year awards. Custodians are the stewards and the keepers of our buildings, and they are often the friendly face for students and staff who rescue our teachers when there is a crisis. Yes. Our facilities workers are heroes who swoop in to offer their expertise in a crisis as well. And I can speak from being a teacher, an assistant principal, and a principal that we value both tremendously. Tonight we are honoring three custodial candidates and three facilities professionals of the year. When we call your name, please stand. And the custodial workers of the year nominees are Vicki Bresna Preston from Habit of Grace Middle and High School. Mr. Harvey Cage, also from Habit of Grace Middle and High School. Yeah. And Mr. David Johnson, retired from Ring Factory Elementary School. I love the spirit, the high fives. The, he's really excited I'm, about this part. I'm, Come up I'm to excited. the mic. I'm excited. Come up to the mic. Yes, sir. And there's your line. All right. <laughs> and here's the and hand. HCPS, the anticipation. 2024 Custodian of the Year. Harvey Cage. <laughs> Come on down, Mr. Cage. You want to say a few words or say thank you? Okay. Just stand in front of the mic. No, sir. But you could say whatever you'd like into the microphone. This is new. Yes. Uh, now I would like to thank all the um, people who voted and. Uh, the ones especially that I work with each and every day, because without them at the school, I wouldn't be standing here. Uh, it takes a team effort. Um, I don't care who you are, it's always about a team effort, especially in our field. And uh, we have outstanding admin staff that's always there for us. And uh, I really do appreciate this. Thank you so much. Come on this way. Give you this to keep. Okay. And you can go have a seat and we'll invite you back up at the end. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. 
beat it. Uh oh. <laughs> Thank goodness he stopped. I was getting ready to do it. All right. <laughs> no, no, don't do it. <laughs> People are watching. <laughs> All right. In addition to our custodial professionals, there are a whole host of trained and credentialed facilities professionals who provide outstanding service to our schools and staff. From fixing a leaky pipe to ensuring that the electricity in a classroom is safe, our facilities professionals are top notch. This year's HCPS Facilities Professional of the Year nominations are Anthony Frasetto, Boiler Technician, DJ Smocker, Crew Chief Plumbing. Yeah. Ralph Williams, HVAC Technician. Yeah. Back to you. And the ACPS 2024 Facilities Management Worker of the Year is. Is that is you? Is that you? Huh? Is that you? Yeah. Oh. Donald D. J. Smatcher. <laughs> Thank you. You can give it to him. Come on down. <laughs> You're the next contestant. First, I'd like to congratulate everyone else who was nominated this year. I'm honored to be recognized alongside of all of you. For all of us, I hope that we see this as a validation of our hard work, effort, and dedication to make the school system a great place to be. Hmm. It is great to see everyone's impact and hard work be recognized. I'd like to thank everyone who helped put the event on today. I would also really like to thank my coworkers within the facilities department who keep our schools up and running. There is a lot of skill and teamwork that goes into our trade. Their knowledge, support, and friendship makes all the difference. I'd also like to give a shout out to the school administrators and custodians for their work together with us to resolve and identify issues in our schools. Getting to work with such a diverse group of people is the highlight of my job. And I can't go without recognizing the support of my family. I'm grateful for their understanding when I've responded to calls at less than ideal hours of night. And <laughs> with them, I definitely would not be receiving this award. So again, thank you for this recognition. It means a lot. Thank you to everyone here for everything you do to support the kids in the community. Thank you. They just get better and better, don't they, Paula? They do, they do. All right, so technology continues to be a huge influence in our lives. It makes life easier when it works and brings those occasional headaches when it doesn't. Sometimes terror also, right? This year, we have a unique opportunity to award one technology professional of the year. Today, we're recognizing Todd Floros. Would you please come to the stage? Todd is one of our printers who works in the print shop and I know brings joy to so many of our professionals each and every day. Todd has been working in the print shop yeah. in the Office of Technology for the past 14 years. I want to just say congratulations to this year's Technology Professional of the Year, Todd Floros. Congratulations. <laughs> you want to say anything? 
just want to thank the person that uh, nominated me. It's very humbling to know that someone would uh, appreciate the work that I do. Um, I work with a great team of guys, uh, Phil Donahue, Nick Sarvos, uh, my supervisor, Bill Waldrop, and my director, uh, Drew Moore. So uh, I just Today appreciate this things. whole thing. Thank you. Wanted to keep going. <laughs> How many of you, poll time, have had a school breakfast or lunch in your life somewhere? <laughs> it could be anytime, anywhere. <laughs> I am team chicken nuggets for life. <laughs> um, our cafe staff brings tons of joy to our students each and every day. And I can tell you from my experience as a principal that you haven't lived until you've lived in a school cafe during the month of September when our kindergarten stars are learning to access their lunches. <laughs> we affectionately, affectionately liken it to herding cats. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, our food and nutrition department provides a critical service to our students, and that's access to healthy meals. Healthy meals equals healthy learners, and this, this year's nominees not only dish up delicious food, but they also provide tremendous customer service. And she's already on the stage, so let's welcome Ms. Kristen Sazina, <laughs> Supervisor of Food and Nutrition. Tonight, she will be announcing our first ever Food Service Professional of the Year. And the nominees are, please stand when I call your name, Faja Ansari, Homestead Wakefield Elementary School. Yeah! Charles Coakley, Hartford County Public Schools Warehouse and Business Services. and Ann Gardner, Satellite Kitchen Assistant from Emerton Elementary School. I know, it's fun. I think I'm more nervous. I'm short. It's all good. All right. And the HCPS Food Service Professional of the Year is Ann Gardner. <laughs> Let's give it up for Ann again. I'd like to thank my son because he's the reason I became a lunch lady. I mean, the hours are great and I get off on snow days. I'm in Texas, so you definitely don't want me driving on the streets when there's snow. <laughs> and my mom, of course, for always being there. I'm deeply fulfilled by what I do, and a leader is only as good as the, who they surround themselves with. None of this would be possible without my team or supportive and capable. My manager, Leah Miller, my principal, Zach Greenbaum, my assistant principal, Jen Valangas, who value and nurture my innovative ideas. Kristen, I'm going to butcher it, Susanna, <laughs> and Rebecca Spencer for having faith in me and entrusting me with the leadership responsibilities at Emerton Cafe. Having mentors like Ron Costa, Kathy Carroll, and Jamie Schuster from Edgewood Middle, Jay from Edgewood Elementary, where I did my training, all made a significant difference in my professional growth and success. Family and community involvement have always been an important driving force in my life. It takes a village to raise a child, especially 
when your child is autistic, a strong team and collaboration is important to achieving goals, and that is what my family has had from Hartford County. I'd like to thank the staff at Homestead Wakefield, where my son was in early intervention class, and he started out in nonverbal class. To the staff at Emerton Elementary, as well as Peter Carpenter and Andrew Boss, who helped me navigate through new challenges that would pop up. To the staff at Beller Middle and Beller High, not only did you help me grow as a parent, your hard work ensured my son's success, and he made the president's list at Harvard Community College. Thank you to you all that have touched my family's lives in some way. You will never know how grateful I truly am to be supported by a wonderful community. Yay! I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. <laughs> Our school-based administrators truly have one of the most challenging yet rewarding roles in our school system. Having been both a principal and an assistant principal, I can say that the hours are long, but the rewards are even better. And for the first time this year, Hartford County Public Schools is honoring three dedicated and hardworking assistant principals and principals, one of which will be crowned our first Hartford County Public Schools assistant principal and first Hartford County Public Schools Principal of the Year. Agree, yes. We are so fortunate tonight to have our principals, principals, Dr. Diane Mack and Mike O'Brien, the Executive Directors of Education Services. Please come up and join me on the stage. <laughs> The nominees for these two awards, like other awards, came from community and school-based recommendations. These nominations were narrowed down to three finalists each, and after an interview process, a winner was selected from a panel of judges. Greetings. Hello. I'm glad you're here. You get this one, and you get this one. You're welcome. They hold it right there, guys. The nominees for our first ever Harford County Public Schools Assistant Principal of the Year are Melissa McKay, Assistant Principal, Southampton Middle School. Aaron Mooring, Assistant Principal, Magnolia Elementary School. and Tara Sample, Assistant Principal, Riverside Elementary School. You ready? I'm ready. Oh, here she comes. <laughs> and the Harford County Public Schools 2024 Assistant Principal of the Year is Tara Sample. <laughs> First, I want to give honor to God, who is the head of my life. <laughs> Thank you to the excellent and education community committee, Dr. Bolson and the Board of Education, Mount Christian, the Harford County Council, and all of the sponsors for tonight's event. Congratulations to all the nominees. Let's give it up for our nominees. <laughs> I 
I humbly stand before you to accept this award. Shout out to my Beaver Nation family at Riverside <laughs> Elementary. <laughs> I am so proud to serve as your assistant principal. I am thankful to have my family here with me, my mother who's in the house, my husband who helped me on the stage, and my two sons, G and Jalen. So many individuals helped guide my leadership journey, my mentors, our board reporter, my colleagues, and administrators. Under the leadership of Caroline Bloxham of Worcester County, Maryland, Alice Bro, Patty Chenworth, Patty Mason, Audrey Voss, Christian Coney, and currently Mark Hamilton, I have been afforded opportunities to teach, learn, grow, and lead. I am forever grateful to each of you for your guidance. Tonight's event is incredible because we are here to celebrate excellence in education. We acknowledge and celebrate the moving parts of our district on scene and behind scenes, working together to promote the academic success and well-being of our students. It is such an honor to be in the presence of our custodians, Office of Technology, facilities, food services, teachers, educational support professionals, and fellow administrators. I thank each of you for your contributions to the advancement of education and HCPS. As I close, Nelson Mandela shared his insight on education. He said that education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Let us continue to be a reflection of excellence using education to teach and transform the lives of generations of our students. Thank you for this honor. Oh, all right. Ready, principals? You guys are over here. I can see you. Yeah, we could clap for them. Let's clap for them. The nominees for Hartford County Public Schools Principal of the Year are Lisa Minutoli, Churchville Elementary School. Stand. You can stand, Lisa. <laughs> I didn't say it, but. Laurie Namey, Magnolia Middle School. <laughs> and Ron Wooden, Old Post Road Elementary School. <laughs> Mike is yours. All right. And the HCPS 2024 Principal of the Year is Ron Wooden. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Tonight, I stand before all of you with a grateful heart, a heart that is filled with love and boldness, a heart that is proud to serve Hartford County Public Schools, which I have done over the past 25 years, and a heart that has loved being a principal at two of the most dynamic schools in our district, Havity Grace Elementary School and now Old Post Road Elementary. Tonight, I am thankful to God for his love that never fails, for his favor that keeps blessing me repeatedly. I am thankful for my village, my family, for believing in me even when I didn't believe in myself. I am thankful for my peeps group chat, my fraternity, my colleagues, my church, and most importantly, my students, staff, my admin team, families, and the community partners. I stand here this evening representing all of them. Tonight's honor is not about Principal Ron Wooden. Tonight's honor is about the most incredible 905 students 
and the 139 staff members who waddle through the halls of what I call the Penguin Palace each and every day. To all my principal colleagues, tonight I applaud and celebrate each and every one of you. Lori, Lisa, and I are a very small representation of the greatness that takes place all over our school system under your leadership. I am because we are, Chris, and we are, therefore, I am. Thank you to the Office of Organizational Development and all of those who played a part in making this evening possible celebrating excellence in education. Thank you, Dr. Bolson. Thank you, Dr. Mack. Thank you, Mr. Smith, for allowing me to be me each and every day to empower and make an impact in the lives of Hartford County's most precious treasures, the scholars and staff at OPR. I am forever grateful. It behooves me to thank Mrs. Barbara P. Canavan, immediate past superintendent of schools, for appointing me to the role of principal and pushing me to take my principal exam even when I didn't feel ready. You saw something in me, and Barb, I am forever grateful to you. Mm -hmm. I leave all of you with the words of my colleague, my college president, the 11th president, and first female president of the Lincoln University, Dr. Niera Sadarkasa. These words I have tried to live by for the past 25 years. Excellence is expected. Distinction is our goal. I am OPR. I am optimistic. I am proud. I am resilient. Grandma, this right here is for you. And thank all of you for the recognition tonight. Well done. I gotta tell you, I'm feeling a lot of passion and joy in this moment, are you? What wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people we have who make up the fabric of our system. And one final group that we have with us this evening is our bus driver and bus attendant of the year nominees. Their winners will be announced in a different ceremony in April, but I wanted to take a moment and acknowledge them. Andrea, Stephen, Holly Marie, Carrie, and Crystal, can you please stand and be recognized? You have a very, very important role in our system. Thank you for all you do for our students each and every day. All right. The HCPS Teacher of the Year program has been around for 30 years. During that time, the process has evolved to the point where this year, we are honoring 55 teachers of the year. Each community nominated a teacher to represent their school as their resident teacher of the year. Tonight, we'd like to honor those 55 teachers. When we share your name, please stand. And audience, let's all applaud our outstanding teachers at the end. Nicole Willis, Aberdeen Middle School. Jacob Zebley, Aberdeen High School. Taylor Staten, Abingdon Elementary. Ashley Childs, Bakerfield Elementary. Michelle Keene, Bel Air Elementary. Sandra Castellano, Bel Air Middle. Jessica Antonakis, Bel Air High. Jill Triskowski, C. Milton Wright High School. Nicole Lovett, Church Creek Elementary. Brianna Esser, Churchville Elementary. Stephanie Gusman, Darlington Elementary. Christine Hopkins Vickers, Deerfield Elementary. Diane Thompson, 
Dublin Elementary, Samantha Simmons, Edgewood Elementary, Jeannie Makoviak, Edgewood Middle, Ann Pape, Edgewood High, Jennifer Selke, Emerton Elementary, Woo! Jennifer Brown, Falston Middle, Monica Finnegan, Falston High, Nikki Hackett, Forest Hill Elementary, Robert Polner, Forest Lakes Elementary, Teresa Krabitz, Fountain Green Elementary, Melissa Ballas, George D. Lisby Elementary, Brooke Shakona, Halls Crossroads Elementary, Mary Kellerman, Harford Academy, Melanie Kane, Harford Glen Environmental Education Center, Lori Janicki, Harford Technical High, Brooke Reaver, Harvard de Grace Elementary, Elizabeth Newby, Harvard de Grace Middle, Jennifer Ball, Harvard de Grace High, Krista Gray, Hickory Elementary, Verna Heiser, Homestead Wakefield Elementary, Danielle Mooney, Jarrettsville Elementary, Carrie Kane, Joppa Town Elementary, Erica Richardson, Joppa Town High, Taylor Peters, Magnolia Elementary, Filaretos Chomos, Magnolia Middle School, Lisa Johnson, Meadowvale Elementary, Amanda Crete, Norrisville Elementary, Tanya James, North Bend Elementary, Elizabeth McElwain, North Hartford Elementary, Nevin Randall, North Hartford Middle, Kathleen Lemke, North Hartford High, Shannon Thomas, Old Post Road Elementary, Sean Vallow, Patterson Mill Middle, Bridget Stymax, Patterson Mill High, Allison Kuchta, Prospect Mill Elementary. <laughs> Jennifer Knapp, Red Pump Elementary, Lauren Kregel, Ring Factory Elementary, Corey Perone, Riverside Elementary, Jamie Pritchard, Roy Williams Elementary, Lauren, I'm sorry, Laura Shorter, Southampton Middle, Ashley Andrews, Swan Creek, Stephanie Bartholomew, William S. James Elementary, Maria Diamond, Youth Benefit Elementary. That's it. Now you may applaud. Each of our 55 nominees are walking away with a one-of-a-kind Excellence in Education polo shirt, courtesy of our generous sponsors. Teachers, we hope you enjoy letting the whole world know the pride we all feel that you are representing Harford County Public Schools this year. After their initial nomination, each nominee could elect to continue to compete for the top five teacher of the year. This year, 34 teachers elected to do so. From there, after a rigorous vetting process, we've narrowed that list of 35 to just five. And let me say, these five are awesome. Sit back, relax, and let's get to know each of the top five right now. I am Verna Heiser. I'm gifted and talented resource specialist at Homestead Wakefield Elementary. Um, I have been teaching for 21 years, 20 of those years in Harford County. One year I was in Pennsylvania. Um, I actually decided I wanted to be a teacher in second grade. Um, I had a spectacular teacher that was inspirational, um, and that's when I made my decision that I was going to be a teacher. Um, pursued it a little bit later in life. Um, I didn't start actually teaching until I was 28, um, and I saw the way that she impacted second grade students and I wanted to have that impact on students. You see that little guy that I just talked to in the hall? Those students get me out of bed. Um, my friends that I know come to school because they're gonna see me smiling and I can make them a little bit happier. Um, those students that struggle with things in the classroom and I have the opportunity to pull them out and do things that they're good at. Um, my students who struggle with behaviors, who need a little bit of a softer touch um, and somebody that's going to play to their strengths and allow them to be successful. Those guys get me out of bed in the morning. As overwhelming as it was to be nominated from this building to be chosen top five was just 
mind-blowing. It was incredible. I honestly never expected it um, just because we are a county of so many fabulous educators and I'm super excited that my message is a message that the county wants to get out um, and to share with everybody. Hi, I'm Jennifer Knapp. I'm a first grade teacher at Red Pump Elementary School. I've been teaching for Harford County Public Schools for 19 years. So I started teaching because I love working with children, but as an elementary school student myself, I had great positive role models and teachers who really worked hard to build relationships and positive environments. And I wanted to do that same thing when I became a teacher. So when I think about an aha moment, I think back to a particularly challenging student that I had in the beginning of my teaching career. And I was really having a difficult time developing that student-teacher relationship with him. And I realized that he loved football. And so I reached out to his mom and asked about a football schedule and if I could come and watch him. And when I went and I watched him, it really made our connection deeper and I realized that as a teacher we need to expand those relationships beyond the school building walls and really get to know our kids and that relationship that I built with him off of that was um, something I'm particularly proud of. Um, so as a brand new teacher I was hired two days before the school year started and I was excited but also overwhelmed at the same time and I was mentored and taken under the wing of my um, teammates that year who were amazing and they really helped me to learn and grow into the teacher that I am today. Along with all my other amazing colleagues and teammates, I feel like I've learned something from every single person that I've worked with. My name is Erica Richardson and I've been teaching here at Joppa Town for 15 years. I've been a teacher for 24 years. I started teaching in New York um, and now of course I'm here in uh, Maryland. Uh, I teach social studies, currently teaching U.S. history, criminal justice, and um, I also teach sociology. Um, I think aha moment um, was a few years ago actually. Um, I had a um, freshman actually and um, I taught government at the time and we had just had our first e exam and the student passed and came to me afterwards after they got their exams back and said, um, I can't believe that I passed and this is the first time I've ever passed a social studies exam. And I said, this, that can't be possible. Like, I'm sure middle school, something. Well, yeah, I passed, but like, I actually got like an 85 on this. I've never done that well before. The pride that that child had um, with just getting that test score back, which again, I'm happy that he scored well, but I'm also happier that he was so excited about his test grade. And when I tell you his grades were consistent from that point on, I just felt like, wow, this really made his day. And what impact then do I have as a teacher? And again, this was years ago, I was new to teaching. And so the idea that what I could do every day would impact a child like that, it really kind of was my aha moment as well as his, that he could be successful. Being a top five finalist has been absolutely amazing. I really cannot believe that I'm here right now. I can't believe that I am able to experience this with the ladies that I'm experiencing it with because they truly are amazing educators. So I'm looking at them and thinking like, wow, these guys are like awesome. So does that mean I'm awesome? Like, is that how that works? I said, but also I do the things that I do, not for the accolades, but for people for my kids, for my community, for my school. And so the fact that someone took time to acknowledge that and then actually nominate me and now make top five, it's, it's unbelievable. Like I can't even, I can't tell you how important this is for me. I cannot stress that enough, how important this is for me and how important it is for my school and my community. Like, and that's the pressure that I have, unfortunately, that I've put on myself because I really want to do well, but at the same time, I am so humble and so grateful that they even thought to say my name because this is just what I do. This is who I am. I'm here every day and I'll be here every day, no matter what. So I'm just super, super grateful. So I'm Jen Selke. I'm the very proud reading specialist here at Emerton Elementary School. I've been lucky enough to work at Emerton Elementary School for 15 years. This is my ninth year as a reading specialist. Prior to that, I taught six years in first grade. So I've always wanted to work in a job where I was able to help people. My mom was a nurse. I come from a family of educators. Um, but really what solidified my teaching career and that decision was at my grandfather's funeral. 
Um, he had students come from all walks of life from 30 to 40 years ago, and they were there to share the moments of joy that that man brought to his life. They shared stories about how he helped change their own life and helped guide them to a path that they were proud of. And I knew in that moment, it was a very sad moment, but I felt so proud for him, and I knew that I wanted to impact my students the same way that he impacted his students. So what makes a great Teacher of the Year is someone who's willing to listen to others, someone who recognizes the responsibility that that role has on the impact of our staff and students of Harford County. I think Teacher of the Year is someone who is willing to be open to new ideas, to talk with people, to find out what's working, to find out what they can do to make lives better in Harford County, and to really be the voice of students and staff. So when I received news that I was nominated from my school, I was extremely humbled and honored. We have great teachers all in the walls of this building, but all over our county. So just to receive that recognition just made my heart so proud and honored. Um, and then I was selected as Teacher of the Year finalist, which I was shocked and excited and I had all of the feels. But really it allowed me to sit down and truly reflect on my practice and the impact that I've had and it makes me excited to be a voice for all of the other teachers and students of our district. Hola, I'm Jill Traskowski and I'm a Spanish teacher at C. Milton Wright High School. I have been a Harford County school teacher for 21 years. I began my teaching career in HCPS at Joppatown High School where I taught for 11 years. I then had the chance to return to my alma mater here at Seamillan Wright High School where I've now been for 10 years. Before Harford County Public Schools, I taught for two years at Escuela Sierra Nevada in Mexico City, which is Una Escuela Primaria. My drive to get out of bed each morning to come to work are all these smiling faces sitting right behind me. Whether it's dressing up for Spirit Week alongside them, or singing silly songs in Spanish to get them to learn el alfabeto or los números and maybe doing a little dance, taking them on field trips to a restaurant or a museum to encourage cultural awareness. I go above and beyond to make sure that these kids have a memorable school experience. I think my aha moments would be anytime students come back to tell me of a time when they were using Spanish outside the classroom, whether it was at work or on a vacation or maybe with a new friend that they made. It makes me feel proud that they're using what they learned from our class out in the real world. All right, we're gonna let them bask in it just a little, a few more moments, just feel it experience all the love that's in this room. So we're gonna ask them to stand just one more time. It is my pleasure to introduce our five Teacher of the Year finalists who are stellar representatives of the teaching community as well as their school communities. Top five, please stand when I call your name in alphabetical order, of course. Verna Heiser, gifted and talented teacher, Homestead Wakefield Elementary School. Jennifer Knapp, first grade teacher, Red Pump Elementary School. Erica Richardson, social sciences teacher, Joppa Town High School. Jennifer Selke, teacher specialist reading, Emerson Elementary School. And last but not least, Jill Traskowski, foreign language teacher, Spanish, C. Milton Wright High School. I don't know why I'm getting nervous. Anyway, Harford County Public Schools teachers are charged with preparing and inspiring our students to succeed by setting high expectations and actively engaging each student. The teachers we are honoring today and those who came before them are truly the stars of the teaching profession. We thank this year's finalists for their tireless efforts and their passion to enrich the lives of students around this county. By being named one of the five finalists, their outstanding leadership and superior achievements in the field of education are both recognized and honored. There is no doubt that their creativity and expertise is truly transforming the future of our children. 
I know you're dying to get the name, right? Who's going to be joining our Teachers of the Year? But before we do that, um, and we have met our first other winners, we want to take a moment to acknowledge those generous business sponsors who have helped make this evening special. So we're going to make them wait? We're going to make them wait. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but you get some great music going on while we share some of these names. And so, Maestro, if you would like to begin, we can. Many of these partners donated gifts to the various awards, which they will receive at the end of the program this evening. Additionally, their generous contributions have 100% financed this evening's event. You've seen the names of all of our business partners at the beginning of the presentation this evening, and they are also highlighted on our social media pages and in the program. But I want to bring special recognition to a few at this time. Let's introduce them to you. First, Harco Credit Union, a presenting sponsor, and we can hold our applause to the end. Pr Jones Junction, another presenting sponsor. Platinum sponsor, APGFCU, as well as Coppermine Beller Athletic Club, and Dell. Duncan and Colwell Banker, Rashmi Kumar Realtor. Anotria is joining our platinum sponsorship this year. Additionally, the Hartford County Education Association, thank you for being a platinum sponsor. Our gold sponsors are Courtyard by Marriott at Ripken Stadium, Freedom Federal Credit Union, as well as Hartford Bank, and Hartford County Public Library. We also have Patient First as one of our gold sponsors, along with Richardson's Florist. We have several silver sponsors who will appear on the screen right now. Ironbirds, ABM Industries, All Pro, Arena Club, Barrett's on the Pike, Card My Yard, Churchville Golf, and joining them, Das Beer Hall, Data Business Services, Delta Family Restaurant, Yum Flavor Cupcakery, Food Pro, Forest Hill Lanes, Go Bowling, and FPC, Gambrels and Equipment, Geneva Club, or Geneva Farm, Golf Course, Guype Associates, Hartford Community College, Habit of Grace Maritime Museum, Hopkins Brewery, and Horizon Cinemas. There are those movies we love. Jarrettville Creamery, G JD Smokehouse, Johnson Controls Incorporated, JTM Food Group, Larry Noto, Lavish Nail Salon, Lucasia Power and Lighting, The Nest on Main, Old Line Barber, Rich Products, Saxons, 31, TJ Distributors, Inc., and Uncle's Hawaiian Grill. And finally, we have Visage Salon and Spa, Wackenfuss Candies, and Yoga Centric. Thank you for sponsoring our event this evening. And finally, we'd like to thank our partner, the Harford County Education Foundation, for their generous support of educators and students throughout the year and their grant to support this event. If you get the chance, please enjoy their services in the community. And when you do, please thank them for helping to elevate excellence in education. As a way to say thank you, each partner will receive a 2024 Celebration of Excellence in Education window cling that they can proudly display on their establishment, denoting their generous contributions um, to this event. This year's Teacher of the Year winner will move on to the State Teacher of the Year competition, where they will once again receive gifts and prizes from the state. Okay, Paula. I think we've waited long enough. Do you? It's time. It's time, it's time. All right, I wasn't supposed to do that. At this time, I'm going to call Superintendent Bolson and our Board of Education President to the stage to name our 2024 HCPS Teacher of the Year. Please welcome Drs. Bolson and Poynton to the stage. once again for their donations and we hope you'll continue to support this very important program that pays tribute to our master educators. 
The Celebration of Excellence in Education program is 100% supported by the community each year, and their support is a true testament to the importance of the work accomplished by all our dedicated employees in Harvard County. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Oh, I like this part. People know that. Because there's a drum yeah. roll. Yeah, yeah. The 2024 Harvard County Teacher of the Year is. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to Erica Richards. Congratulations, Erica, on having earned the title of Harford County Teacher of the Year. What an honor to be named by your peers and supervisors as our top educator. I commend you for your hard work and dedication. Now, Erica, you have some final words before bringing this exciting event to a close. I'm using my phone. I'm not on it. I promise I'm using it. <laughs> <laughs> I, tell, I tell my kids to get off their phone all the time. Whew. Okay, I promise this won't be long because I'm not going to make it. And Peter, like I told you in my interview, I'm going to cry in the car again. <laughs> you can cry in front of us. Thank it's you. okay. <laughs> Good evening. I would like to say, start by saying happy birthday to my husband. Today is actually his birthday. <laughs> I'm so honored to be here receiving this award. I must take a moment to thank God, because without God, none of this is possible. Thank you to Dr. Stanton, Dr. Carpenter, and the entire interview committee. I would like to thank you for organizing this entire event, but also creating the opportunity to acknowledge teachers and other professionals in Harford County Public Schools. Thank you for all the sponsors and vendors, and of course the students who contributed to this evening. The food was wonderful, thank you. Mm -hmm. Especially in Java Town, your food was great too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a little silly. Thank you to the Board of Education, Dr. Bolson, and of course, HEPS leadership for all that you do every day. It's so appreciated. I decided to be a social studies teacher because one of my high school social studies teachers uh, actually was Sister Marianne. I went to an all-girls Catholic high school. And so, yes, very uh, stern. Anyway, Sister Marianne, she was phenomenal. Sister Marianne brought the class alive. She was full of personality, but she also shared some very personal experiences with us which I didn't really understand and didn't know that teachers could do, but I loved the fact that she did it. I thought to myself, if I ever teach history, that is gonna be who I am. I will share and share and share, and I do. As you already know, I am a pretty busy lady. I take pride though in my school, as you can see in my completely purple dress. <laughs> but I do take pride in all the things that I do. Whether it's standing on the football sidelines every Friday night doing live stats, or as a head coach for the girls' varsity basketball team, or on Wednesday afternoon into the evening, I'll be at uh, Patterson Mill for our upcoming track meet. Yes, I do wear sneakers occasionally. All of, those, all of those opportunities are just more opportunities to be able to support kids. I feel like it's very important that we know that they are supported. We need to make sure that their voices are heard. 
We need them to know that they are loved by each and every person that they come in contact with. There are times, there are times when we as educators or administrators, even the custodians, I would say that is for sure, we are the only ones that they have contact with in a day. So why shouldn't that contact be positive? Why can't it be positive? It could be something simple like, how are you? Good morning. And trust me, they hear you, even though they have earbuds on. They can hear you. <laughs> My number one priority with all the things that I do at school is to teach. I think it's super important that we stress the importance of education, yes, but I also feel like it's important we need to stress the importance of choices. I, as a teacher for, I teach up the upper level, so uh, juniors and seniors, I think it's important that they know that the choices that they have and the choices that they make will have a direct impact on their future. An impact maybe in the foods class. My brother is a pastry chef because he made an omelet in the 11th grade. <laughs> it's something simple like that. And yes, I do share that with my students. Yes, I did go to college. Yes, I did get my master's degree. But yes, my brother is successful in culinary school and doing very well. So I think they need to know that choices are very important. At school, we are not known, we are not known as Joppa Town. We are known as J-Town. And my J-Town family has been so supportive this entire time, from text messages, emails, little cards in my mailbox, so many people throughout the county that have ever stopped and taught at Joppa. If you were ever at Joppa Town at some point, can you please raise your hand or stand? <laughs> That is truly what I'm talking about. The fact that at some point in time, we had contact, and in that contact, you have then kept together and kept that conversation going, and then spread that love throughout the county. It is important that I am able to provide those same experiences for students throughout the county, the same experiences that I provide for students at Joppa Town. So that is my number one goal. Ladies, Jen, Jen, Verna, and Jill, you already know we have work to do. We are known as the Visionary Voices, and the Visionary Voices, yes. Oh, no, wow, right? yes. And the Visionary Voices are exactly that. We are determined to make sure that voices are heard, from our kindergarten students all the way to our future leaders at the high school level. Sorry, I'm just so nervous. To my husband and my children and grandchildren, thank you for always giving me time to do what I need to do for our kids. You have no idea how important it is to have the support of a loved one and your family at home, mm -hmm. knowing that even though I'm gonna come home for the fourth night at nine o'clock, <laughs> that my dinner is ready and that my family understands. That's so important. I couldn't do half of the things that I do without them. To my mom, 34 and a half years in the elementary schools of New York. You taught me more than you would have imagined, Mama. More than you know. <laughs> to my J-Town people, as I close, LaShawn, thank you for the nomination. Ms. Williams, thank you for supporting it and nominating me. To my former principal, Ms. Ziegler, who gave me the opportunities years ago to have an impact larger than I could ever imagine. I appreciate you all. My friends, my family, I call them. I thank you for being here tonight, supporting me always, and knowing that this is where I belong. And I am so, so grateful and happy to be here. Thank you. So one of the cool parts about being the Hartford County Public Schools Teacher of the Year that makes it a little bit different and unique from other districts is 
a very special gift from jo our partners at Jones Junction. So I want to invite Mary Chance and those from Jones Junction to come on up to present you with something really cool. And I have it behind my back. <laughs> but you can kind of see it on the camera, but we're not going to hide it. So please give a round of applause to Jones Junction and the amazing gift that they provide. Feel free to say whatever you want. I don't know how you follow that, but <laughs> first of all, um, my name is Mary Chance and I'm the community liaison for Jones Junction and this is Christine Cup, who does all the good stuff behind the scenes. So we have this big, big key, but I have to give this lady a hug. <laughs> When she started talking about teachers in her past, all I could do was get this flood of Catholic nuns <laughs> in my head from first grade all the way through high school. And there are just two that I could really go back to and think, gosh, she's absolutely right. And the impression that you have made on your students must be phenomenal. They're going to all go back and say, remember that teacher? She was teacher of the year. She was freaking fabulous. Yes. So, it, is, it is truly our honor uh, from Jones Junction to give you the key to the car. But we got the real keys too. But, um, and I hope that when you see her out there driving around in this cute car, that you'll honk and wave to her, give her the thumbs up, and okay. say, you're the best. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Erica. We look forward to hearing so much more from you as the 2024 Teacher of the Year throughout the upcoming year. What an amazing night of celebrating excellence in education. Isn't that right, Peter? Absolutely. And once again, we want to thank each and every one of you for being here this evening in this very, very unique celebration. We want to extend our congratulations to our Educator Hall of Fame inductees and first ever of the year nominees and winners and our outstanding teachers. You, you, you are the lifeblood of our system and the heartbeat of our system. And we are so grateful for all that you do. Yes. Yes. And to our four Teacher of the Year finalists and newly crowned Teacher of the Year, you have shared with us the incredible passion that you have for motivating and preparing your students for life. And we so appreciate that. Well, I had fun. Did, did you? Of course I did. <laughs> we always have fun, Peter. <laughs> Anytime we can celebrate the good that we have going on in our public school system is definitely a fun night. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you know me, I like to do this. How often in life do we really get a standing ovation for someone? And so you've been sitting long enough. Please stand. Let's get that blood pumping because we have some tremendous people to <laughs> thank for the hard work that they did for putting this on. So can we please just very quickly give a round of applause to... Peter. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we do need to give a round of applause to Peter. <laughs> but also... Joyce Jablecki, Kim Sullivan, Kim DeBilius, Mary Beth Stapleton, Stephanie Wall, Jillian Lader, and Lindsay Billadu, Audrey Voss, Christy Crawford Schmick, Jay Behrens, Kyle Anderson, and Cornell Brown. These are all the brains behind this program, so we, can we give them a hand?
and we had so many who helped make this night go smoothly, thank goodness. Um, Jeffrey Winfield um, and Josh Dill and the students from Habit of Grace High School for providing our music. <laughs> and two more notes of gratitude, our students who helped greet and host you this, this evening from serving the food, for handing you a program at the door. Wasn't it great to be surrounded by our students? Yeah. And finally, we want to help um, acknowledge the. Uh, bleh, I'm getting tongue tied. The same it's thing happened to bedtime. me last year. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we want to acknowledge James McVicker, who started us out this evening with yes. our festivities. Thank you, James, for being with us this evening. And uh, Peter. We can't leave without talking about our hosts with the most, the staff at Mountain Christian Church. Yes. They set up the entire evening. Yes. Can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> yeah. And of course, all of you, um, we want to thank you genuinely for all that you do for the kids and for our system. We look forward to seeing you all next year. Who will be crowned then? But until then... You can follow our Teacher of the Year as, he, as she experiences, there's no he this year, as she experiences this year-long journey through her blog, which will be found on the school system at hcps.org. Mm -hmm. One last note, because of grand exits, we know that from great shows, we love grand exits. And as you are exiting this evening, you may be tempted to go out the way that you came in. If you are going out the way that you came in and you're going right towards Edgewood or Joppa Town or Abingdon area, you're going to be in great shape. But I'm going to tell you right now that if you go out the way that you came in and you want to try and go left, you're going to be sitting there for a long time because there's a lot of traffic right now on Mountain Road. The better way to go would be to go right, hit a left on Singer Road and then get to Bel Air that way, or even better, if you go out towards the old church building up here and go down the back of the building and go down Jerusalem Road, which is right behind the church. Hang a right on Old Joppa Road, you'll come to the light, and boom, hang a left, and you're right on your way. Does that make sense? He's so good at this, isn't he? I don't know so about that. But <laughs> we are going to ask all of our nominees this evening to please come to the stage at this time for your gifts. All of those who are helping to give gifts this evening um, for... Our categories can come help with that. And be safe in your travels. Have a great Thank evening. You. Thank Good you. Good night. So much. <laughs>